What's going on? What's going on, everyone? So uh, this is going to be a short video. Um, it is a uh, response to uh, Cowboy Jeff Smith. I, I actually like Cowboy Jeff Smith. I think he has an amazing accent. Um, I like his, his, his hat. Saying all of that, Cowboy mm. Smith is wrong. Um, he uh, really um, does not understand the doctrine of total depravity coming from the reform view, uh, as he says, the Calvinistic view. Um, so I'm gonna play this video. Uh, I took down some notes, so I'm gonna pause and respond. Uh, we go from there, okay? All right, let's 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 get to it. Where in the Bible does it teach total depravity? I know in the book of Romans chapter three, it teaches for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and there is none righteous, no, not one. I know it teaches that, but that is not teaching the Calvinistic view of total depravity where we don't have the ability to be saved or even to respond to the gospel, but rather what the- Okay, all right, all right pause, pause, pause. Okay, <laughs> the Calvinistic view. Um, so he, he totally gets it wrong. Wow. Um, when you hear my reformed brothers and sisters say a uh, total depravity, um, I like to say inability. Um, but what we're meaning is we're not saying that man is fully depraved to the point where he cannot do anything. What we're saying is he can only make negative choices to the gospel, okay? Let's say that again. He can only make hostile negative choices pertaining to God. To say that man does not make choices is absurd. We clearly see in the scriptures man rejecting the gospel. We see the 70 walking away from Jesus. They made a choice. They responded to him. They didn't just stand there and God had to force them out. So to say that that is the Calvinistic view, sir, you got it completely wrong. So if you're going to try to represent the reformed view of it, please get it right. Um, yeah, let's let's get back to it. Bible is teaching in Romans chapter three is teaching that we are all under the law and we, we all have to repent. It teaches on the contrary that we do have the ability to repent. We do have the ability to respond to God's invitation for salvation, that we are saved whenever we put our free faith in Jesus Christ. And okay, okay, here we go, here we go, okay. Um, he says, we are saved whenever we put our free faith our free faith. What do you mean by that? Now he quotes Romans, but what's interesting is he's contradicting scriptures. It says uh, in Romans uh, chapter three, uh, let's go to let's let's go to verse uh, ten. Say as it is written, none is righteous, no, not one, not one as no one. It says, no one seeks for God. So how can you make a positive choice to the gospel when you're hostile to the gospel so how do you want to play this that he's saying a calvinistic view i'm saying i don't think the scriptures is teaching a pelagian view of the scripture where man does not is not affected by the fall if we go back to genesis 3 we clearly see a de decline once sin came in through the actions of Adam and Eve. You would have to butcher and get have a distorted view of original sin to have this type of theology that uh, Cowboy Jeff is, is displaying. We say, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe he died on the cross to wash. Yeah, once again, I, I just pause right there. Why would you? Why would you want to? How could you when you're hostile towards the gospel? You, you, you couldn't, you couldn't clearly and also too. In Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, this is another verse. Um, if you're dealing with Mormons that this verse is gonna come up. Uh, it says, by grace you have been saved through faith and not of your own, uh, your own self. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works so that no one may boast our free faith how can it be free if man is already already inherently have that faith in them you see what i'm saying so already is so you're saying man is basically neutral 
man has a neutral will. Uh, the reform cap is saying no. It, let me back up. Uh, the Bible is saying no. The Holy Spirit through Apostle Paul says no one seeks after God. No one would choose God because the will, as in what Martin Luther was saying, there's a bondage of the will and that bondage is sin. Sins away. I believe he could be the righteousness that I need. I am not righteous in myself. I don't have the ability to create that within myself, but I you know, there again. So if you, you have this faith in you inherently to make positive choices, but you just said, you do not, I'm, I'm quoting him. I do not, I'm sorry. I don't have the ability. Can you read my son? Create that within myself. Huh? Which one is it, Cowboy Smith? So either you're neutral, and to be neutral is to have, to be able to make a good and bad choice. After the fall, the only people that had that was Adam and Eve prior to the fall, and the only person after that was only Jesus Christ, because he was not born in sin. His, his will was not in bondage to sin, because he had no sin. So are you saying that you are born with a, a natural you know a will that's neutral and everyone else is i guess also too i would like to ask then and this was always interesting to me then what's the difference between you and your neighbor oh i don't know about your neighbor i'm just i'm just giving an example um that's let's say he's atheist now what made you respond to the gospel positively and what made them respond to it negatively? I don't think you would want to say, well, I no, I was, you know, I, I, uh, I'm more righteous than the next person. I don't think you would go there. I chose to place my faith in Christ. Well, if that's, if man has a neutral will, what's the difference between them making that, that positive choice to the gospel in you? Because here's the thing, if it's in you, then you can boast. But clearly, the scriptures say otherwise. I can believe in the one who came and died on the cross for me. So I put my faith in Jesus, repent of my sin, and follow him. And if you'll do it, he'll save your soul. So you do have the ability to receive Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, you can't just say something and that just makes it true. Like, oh, you can do it. So that's just the truth. No, you you have not proven your argument. You you have quoted. In, in fact, actually, you hurt your argument because you quote Romans, and Romans say totally different from what you're saying. How did you make this make sense? Furthermore, once again, do you have a righteousness in yourself that you're able to exercise freely? If you say yes then you clearly are rejecting original sin. And what I mean by original sin, you're rejecting Genesis 3 to fall. Christ did come and die for all men. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so we have been- All right, yeah, let, let, let's deal with that. We gotta deal with that. We gotta deal with that because that always comes up. If you wanna find your Bibles, um, so this is in 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse eight is what he quotes. So he said, I'm gonna read it out. They said, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, okay? Keep that in mind. That with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you. Remember, beloved, now you, let's remember who he's talking to here, who's the audience not wishing that any should perish but that all should reach repentance we have to remember and we have to keep things in context who is apostle paul addressing well clearly he's not talking about just a general he's not talking about the world a group of this mixture of people he said beloved so if you want to keep your logic i'm looking at the scriptures and i'm i'm, I'm exegeting the text we see beloved so beloved can count as believers. I don't know why you would call pagans beloved, but let's just follow your argument. If you're saying that God does not wish that none should perish, but we clearly know people are going to perish in their sins, 
then what what does that say about God? If no one should perish, then that means everyone should be saved. And I don't think you're a universalist, because clearly that would go against scripture. So the only other argument, the only other explanation would be, is that God's plans are being thwarted by man. Blasphemy! But I, I just want you to consider this, and, and I'm going to be done. I just want you to consider this. And anyone else that holds to an autonomous free will. What I mean by autonomous, I mean that has free range to do whatever he or she wants to do. Did you choose to be born? No. Did you choose your parents? No. Did you choose your gender? No. Did you choose where you were to be born at? No. Did you choose your eye color, your hair? No. All these things that you have no absolute choice in making, but when it comes to uh, salvation, now all of a sudden, not only do you have the choice to make that choice, God has created beings that can thwart his purposes. Do you know how devastating that would be if you have unconverted, autonomous man making choices free range choices god will always be playing defense he would never be able to get any of his uh what he wants to get done so you see what i'm saying so i'm coming at it from a monergistic view which is a christ-centered view you're coming at it from a synergistic view which is a man center and i know some don't like it but that's just what it is when you have a very low view of sin and high view of man Perfect. god is always here and it is here but then you stamp the free will on it god would not be loving if he did not give his creature free will but the problem is we still got to deal with genesis 3. if man is sinful to the core we will only that means no one to be saved because we all according to romans which you quoted pastor jeff no one seeks after god so no one to be saved I don't think you want to go there. So, um, yeah, uh, it's not a in depth. Uh, it's a lot more I would like to say, but I just want to keep it short. Thank you for watching the video, uh, Pastor Jeff. Like I said, this is this is all out of love, brother. I just, you know, it, look when you put a video out there, it's fair game. Your doctrine, your theology is fair game, and I don't see it lining up with scripture. But solo de gloria, all praise be to God. Love you guys. Have a great day.